Okay, so I wanted to show you kind of the scanning process, how to put together a nice clean scan, uh, particularly of pencil artwork, because sometimes when you've got grayscale stuff, you can um, you want to be able to enhance that line work, make sure that your scan is as high quality as possible and ready for print. So in this particular case, uh, the artwork that I've got is a really beautiful cover piece put together by Stephen Cummings. This is for Wayward Issue 4. Um, I already have a high-res scan of this, and, and Steve actually gave me the original artwork for it, and I absolutely love it. But I wanted to use it here as an example, just so you can see kind of the process that I might go through to put together a high-quality scan and make sure it's ready for print, along with a couple little tricks that I use to uh, get the, the nicest looking kind of finished crisp contrast on that line art. So first things first is how you scan the actual piece in. Uh, in this case, it's an 11 by 17 drawing, so it's not going to fit on the scanner bed glass in one go. Uh, so I scanned it in two pieces and I'm gonna merge those together in a seamless quality and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, normally I would scan these as flush as possible, but I've got one purposefully rotate it a bit so that I can show you a way to to get that uh, dead on as well. But here we've got um, the two pieces are scanned. There's a lot of overlap between them. And the reason why I want that is to make sure that there's enough material for Photoshop to recognize. So when we merge them together, we won't be just trying to line up one tiny little part of the artwork. If you've got a really big piece, you might need three, four, five, six scans. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that they're all scanned. Uh, make sure they're all scanned the same format. Make sure they're scanned the same size and that you're um, nice high quality as well. So if you go here, you'll see under image size, these are 400 DPI or dots per inch. And that's a, a good resolution to work at. Higher than that can be better. You don't have to go too crazy. I know some people like want to scan everything at 1200, but you know, file size is also an issue. Make sure you know what you're going to be using it for and, and why. All right. Um, it's always easy to downscale stuff, but you can't necessarily scale it up. All right. So here we go. I've got my piece here. Uh, I want to rotate this particular one. So it's a little bit more straight and flush. Uh, and so the way I can do that, this is a really cool trick that I was shown many years ago and now I'm going to teach it to you. So what I'm going to do is if I want this particular part to be 90 degrees horizontal, uh, rather than just rotating it and trying to figure that out by eye, I can let Photoshop do it for me. So I go to the ruler tool over here on the left hand side. I'm going to grab this corner. I'm going to trace over to this particular corner just like that, let it go, go over to image, image rotation and arbitrary. And what you'll see is, is that Photoshop fills in that number automatically. So it tells you exactly what you need to rotate in order to get that to 90 degrees. Click okay, boom. And what you'll see is that's now straight up and down, which looks heck of a lot better and straighter. So I'm gonna basically recrop that Make sure there's lots of overlap with my previous scan. Save it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is now to put these two together, I'm going to use Photo Merge. So Photo Merge is a tool here in Photoshop under File, Automate. Right at the bottom is Photo Merge. I tend to use Reposition so it doesn't add any additional warping to the process. And then I've got my two scans here on the desktop. I'm going to click both of those, add those to sort of the pool of material that I want it to sample. And it's going to blend the two images together. And then let it do what it does. Bam. And as you can see, what we've got now is one perfect merged scan of the two halves. I didn't have to go through any hassle with it. I didn't have to mess with uh, any kind of rotation. I don't have to look at it by eye and hope that one part is synced up with another. It all just fits together really, really cleanly, really, really nicely. Recrop it, flatten the two sides. You'll see that Photoshop did all kinds of crazy stuff to uh, 
put those two halves together, just flatten it into one nice clean image. And then before I start doing any other adjustments, I will save that. So I'll just save that as, you know, whatever my, my file, you know, sort of feature would be. And I usually call it raw scan. So that if I ever need to go back, if I ever need to, to you know, get to the original material or as close to the original as possible, this is what I've got. I've got that nice clean raw scan that I can deal with. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to adjust and sort of uh, tweak these, the, the, the line art to make sure it's as dark as possible. So one of the ways I can do that is just to multiply these layers against each other. So I take this background layer on the right, I'll duplicate it, and then I'll change the layer mode to multiply. And you'll see right from the get-go, it's sort of all the dark areas will multiply against each other. If I want to go even darker, I can do it again just by duplicating that layer. Boom. So now the contrast is already much stronger. We're sort of strengthening that line art. So the original pencils are a little bit darker. We are introducing some gray kind of patchy areas. So we're going to need to touch that up and I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to flatten those layers, put them all together. So we're back to one single background layer. And then there's a couple ways you can do this. One of the easiest ones is to go to an area where you've got a nice range of the gray through to the dark. Go to image, adjust levels. And then there's a couple ways you can do it. One of the ways is to take these sliders. So I'll take the slider on the right hand side here and I'll just sort of bring it closer to the middle and you'll see that the white level is changing. Bring that middle one in and you'll see that it's contrasting up quite a bit more. And so I can sort of, what kind of threshold do I want to have on this? How do I want it to all fit together? And what do I think will look good? Now there are some lines that are not going to be dark enough and there are some lines that are going to be a little bit fuzzy. So I'm going to need to go in and make some adjustments. Let's say this line here, it's still quite light gray. If I want to deepen that up, one of the ways I can do that is to grab the burn tool, put it on midtones. And I can just run it over top. I usually use a soft brush so it blends in well. And I can just run it over top of that line. I'll get closer so you can see what it's doing. See how it just deepens that line up <clears throat> without adding any gray to the white area. Just give it a kind of quick run over. Now you see there are some other little fingerprints and elements. This is where you know the cleanliness of the scan, the clean cleanliness of the original line art is really a factor. But let's say I wanted to touch up this stuff. So I've got these little gray smudges. Going in with an eraser and erasing every single one can be quite a hassle, uh, quite a pain, and it's going to take you a lot of time. There's a reason why you know people like working with ink because you get that absolute contrast of the black and white. Or uh, they like working digitally because obviously you're going to get that cleanliness of your original line art. But if you want to use a, a nice scan, one of the ways you can touch this stuff up, I'll go in and I'll darken up areas. And then I'll also use the dodge tool. So I use the dodge tool, the opposite of the burn tool, set that to highlights. And then what it does is, is whoop, it's a little too strong. I'm going to turn down the exposure just a bit. Turn it to about a 30. And then what you'll see is it'll knock out the grays, but it leaves the top end. So it leaves the black, it leaves the dark gray, and it just drops away all the fuzz. It drops away all that lower end of the smudging. And it's a really quick way to go in and just give it a little bit of a tweak, get rid of some of that extraneous stuff. I mean, if you've got big, blotches and fingerprints, you're going to need to go in with an eraser. There's no question. But if you just want to give it a quick tweak, you just want to get it ready. This is one of the ways you can do it. You'll see here, I can just run it along these windows and it just takes out the gray and leaves behind the darker line art. It's a really, really nice trick to go through and touch up these kind of raw scans get them ready before they're going to head off to the flatter, head off to the colorist, head off to the painter, whatever your particular um, 
you know, situation is going to be. Every kind of production pipeline is a little bit different. So you're going to need to find the one that sort of works for your particular project. But if you've got good line art, oh, I went a little bit too, too far on that one, but if you've got good line art and you start with a nice quality scan, even if you're working with a smaller scanner, you can merge those pieces together. You can scan at high resolution. You can get it prepped and ready for your particular uh, situation. So now you know this is the way to, that I prep a lot of the line art or I work with uh, someone else and, and they do the same kind of thing. Use that burn and dodge tool to either deepen some of those pencil lines or to um, use the dodge tool to take out you know, some of the, uh, the fingerprint kind of stuff. Anyways, now you know and uh, you'll be ready to prep your scans, get your original uh, artwork as nicely scanned as possible and ready for other production. Uh, if you guys like this video and you find it useful, uh, let me know. It's really good to hear from people. And I will try and do other little kind of line art tutorials that will hopefully be just as useful. All right.